Uh, we had some some viewers send in uh, questions to us, Dutch, and I want to I want to get to some of those questions. I think they're really they're really great um, questions that people have. One of them is just you know what's the most important thing a leader can do in a time like this? Is it just you know to maintain calm, or is it should leaders think differently about what their role is in a situation like this versus a steady state? Well, I think again the main thing that they need to to emphasize uh, to themselves and to others is that because we are in unprecedented situations. We're going to be learning our way forward and trying to, to uh, figure out what the issues are and to deal with them. W the way we characterize crises, Brian, is to say they're like a fountain of issues and questions and decisions and competing priorities. And in ordinary circumstances, we can pretty quickly see what the issues are. The questions are well defined. We know most of the answers and we know what to do. But in a crisis situation, COVID-19, none of those applies. We don't know what all the issues are. We don't immediately see what the competing priorities are, or they, they emerge as we go along. Uh, we, don't, we can't define the questions easily. We don't know the right answers to those questions. So what we emphasize is that what leaders need to do is to take their most entrepreneurial and innovative and forward-looking leadership stance and, and convene a process to solve these problems in real time. So let me say something about what I mean by that process. First of all, the process consists of the people you bring together and the way in which they interact. So who do you need to have? So if you're taking this from, for, for example, an organizational perspective, a firm that's trying to make its way through uh, this event, uh, who would be the kinds of people? Well, I, I would suggest three groups of people that you need to have associated with, the, with, with the, your problem solving in this circumstance. The first are people who understand and represent the different priorities and different values and different goals that your organization has. So you wanna make sure that you have all the, the equities, the, the things that people care about, the interests represented in the conversation. Uh, that means you, you need, for example, your labor force has to be represented because they may have different concerns than, other, uh, than, than corporate leadership does. So you need to, first of all, convene a group. The, the group needs to include people who represent the different interests that you have. Uh, the second thing is you need people who know about this event. That is, you need good advice, whether it's from inside your organization or maybe you can draw in advisors from outside or just have somebody scanning the outside uh, information that's in, available in public media and through uh, the press and so on uh, about what is the nature of the event? Uh, what are the facts medically? What are the issues logistically and so on? So the uh, people who are familiar with the way in which the event itself is evolving uh, at, in your firm and elsewhere. And then the third group is people who really understand your firm. That is, they understand the, the workings of it, the things that, are, uh, that might not occur to everybody, that m people might not know about, you know, this is a, a particularly scarce and difficult thing for us, or we only have a few, few people who know how to do that. So what are the key things about the way the business operates? Now, if you take those three groups, you've got a pretty good representation of what we care about, what is the actual situation, and how our firm fits that, how we relate to that. Now, that group should be charged with looking at the issues overall. So in other words, we don't want a bunch of separate problem solving groups. We may want to delegate from this, we call this a, a, a critical incident management team as a, as a standard piece of jargon. I don't care what you call it, but it's important to get that group together and to give them the task of trying to embrace the whole range of issues that we are trying to confront. So that when we, when we uh, say to some subgroup here, we want you to work on the logistics of the supply chain and report back to us about that. That we don't delegate that in a way that misses any of the large issues. Mm -hmm. We have to have somebody who's, who's keeping track of all of those. So uh, you charge the group with trying to embrace all of the issues to deliberate about the most important ones for the organization by itself and then to delegate to others uh, pieces of the work that, that you can. And then you, what you want is something, you know, we would call in another setting, we would call it design thinking or agile process or a generalized problem solving, just over and over and over again. That group wants to ask, you know, what are the key issues that are at risk? What, are the, what is the actual situation here? What are the options that we have? Which options should we try? And let's make a decision and go ahead and try that. And then let's see how we're doing. And you just over and over and over again, iteratively, uh, resolve that problem continuously. Yeah. We call that learning your way forward through an event, and that is the best that we can hope for, and that's what leadership uh, constitutes, the ability to get that process together and to keep it operating. Leaders need to be confident in the process, and they also need to be highly communicative 
uh, to everyone. One of the key issues here, Brian, is that because we are learning our way forward, we will not necessarily get the answer right the first time or the second time. We're going to make mistakes. Uh, perfection is uh, a far cry from what we can what we can hope for. What you can assure people is we're doing the best we can. We're going to learn as fast as we possibly can, and we'll keep at it until we get better and better answers.